Take me to the 16th Avenue tiled steps. All right, let's go. There's someone running across the street with their dog. I have to say, after using 1146, and I know there's actually a surprising amount of people who haven't been able to see the latest FSD beta. If you're a Hardware 4 customer, if you're one of the people who's still stuck on 1136, um, even most people are still on 1144, and I, I think most people just haven't really seen how good the latest software has gotten yet. It's gotten freakishly good to the point where it can just do drives perfectly sometime. Um, and it really just is incredible when you look at how Tesla has just dominated and how much trouble they've caused the legacy automakers just with their electrification efforts. Just based on electrifying their cars, you look at how Ford and GM have been keeping up, right? Everyone was talking about how they were gonna surpass Tesla how Volkswagen was going to surpass Tesla. Not anymore. Uh, Ford and GM are struggling with EVs, losing a ton of money, increasing estimates for how much they're going to lose this year. Volkswagen sales are dipping in China. They're now having to partner with X paying a Tesla knockoff. So all this trouble Tesla's caused in the industry, just with electrification, just based on the fact that they only sell electric cars and how that has just forced the entire industry to adapt. But what they have here with FSD is way bigger than electrification. And as a matter of fact, if you're used to an electric car, electric is now the least interesting thing about a Tesla, honestly. The software defined architecture and the autonomy are probably by far more differentiating today than electrification is. Electrification is almost sort of taken for granted. Everybody's got an electric car now. Um, but not many people have a car with a true software-defined architecture and true general purpose self-driving like this car has, where you can just tell it where you want to go and it can take you there anywhere in the country nobody else has been able to put out a similar product mobilize said they're working on their supervision system gm has said they're working on ultra cruise nobody's actually been able to put it out yet why because it's insanely hard see this this woman who's crossing the street with her dog i didn't even see her i only saw her in the visualization and then I actually looked and said, oh, okay, there is actually a person there. So even today with just this basic perception system they have, they can already spot things before you do. And I'm noticing more and more often it's spotting things before I notice them. And this runs even in manual, of course, to keep you safe when you're driving manually. So electrification has been a challenge. Autonomy in the software defined architecture is going to be a tsunami. That's the level of disruption and possibly destruction it's going to cause across the automotive supply chain. I don't think people realize. One day you're just going to get an update, download the update, and the car just drives perfectly. You don't have to touch anything, it just does everything itself. All you do is you punch in the destination. I believe it because I've seen it and you're seeing it right now. So this is important information you can potentially internalize ahead of other investors. Autonomous technology is entering the market. We just saw a driverless cruise car driving by. It's completely common now to see a driverless car here in San Francisco. and my car now just takes me everywhere 
uh, without any issue. So, you know, it's incredible how many people just dismiss this. Even Tesla bulls, they go, oh, well, it's taking too long. You know, it's never going to be done. And yeah, doing incredible things takes a long time. If it was easy, then you'd really have no competitive advantage in investing in it because everybody could just create it and everyone could just get it from suppliers and, you know, there really wouldn't be anything challenging about it. It would just be another basic feature. But it's very challenging and doing it right, creating a comfortable experience for the user that's also safe is insanely difficult. I don't think people realize. With just cameras, my car is taking me where I've asked it to take me, to the 16th Avenue tile steps. Just based on me saying, hey, I want you to take me here. It interpreted my voice, it looked up where that was, and now it's using computer vision to actually drive there. The fact that it's dark doesn't matter. So before the end of the year, I'm confident everyone across the country is going to be experiencing drives where the car just does everything perfectly. You have zero complaints. And it's gonna really surprise people. You know, people tend to fixate on the issues. They try FSD beta and it does, you know, 90% plus of everything perfectly. But they're just like, ah, I got in the wrong lane that one time. And what they can't see is that the foundation is there for it recognizing and interpreting the whole world and creating a pretty good plan to move through it. But they just focus on this sort of one little thing that is actually pretty easy to fix. Um, but often it doesn't get fixed because there's so many other things. There's a million different issues. Your personal pet issue that you deal with on a daily basis that's on your way home or whatever may not get that attention right away. And there's a big lag in terms of when they work on an update and when they send it out that people don't really, um, don't really realize how small these things are in the grand scheme of things. As more and more people use this, as the number of miles put on every day accelerates, the number of uh, the cars accelerates, the amount of training compute accelerates, you're going to have the AI just get better and better. I've seen it over the last three years. I've seen it, you know, barely able to go a mile without requiring takeover to now in many cases being able to do an entire drive perfectly. All right, so we're cruising along now. We got a pretty sharp curve in the road here. So let's see how it handles that. Beautiful. That one's tough because you can't really see. Sorry, I'm holding this light so you can see the steering wheel, so it's kind of making some noise. And now we've got a right turn on Fell Street in 0.8 miles. We got a red light. Stopping for traffic light, very good. And there, look, see there's two driverless cruise cars right there. They tend to sort of all follow the same roads. But, you know, it's like I'm living in a different reality, uh, the way people are talking on social media. Even people who are Tesla bulls or uh, they believe in AI, they're impressed with chat GPT, but there's some cognitive dissonance going on where I think it's sort of like, you know, being optimistic about autonomous vehicle timelines has been... Um, you know, seen as foolish for so long, people just sort of laughing and going, ha ha, it's not possible, it's going to take forever. That now that you're actually seeing people introduce these products into the market, there's a little bit of a lagging sentiment indicator there where people were maybe overly optimistic in the past, 
So now they've sort of uh, become more cynical, you know, in, in their sort of analysis of this thing. But they're a little bit behind in realizing that um, this is crossing the chasm. It's getting to a place where it actually works. And there's a Waymo car up ahead in the lane to our left. So many different robot cars of many different brands here in San Francisco. It's completely normal to see a car go by without a driver or a Tesla go by that's piloted by software and you may not even know. Look at all these ridiculous sensors on the Waymo spinning around using energy and the Tesla driving side by side with that Waymo on the same street using just computer vision. Right in about 0.1 miles, we're gonna turn right. And they've got V12, they've got hardware four, they've got tons of new capabilities that are gonna make FSD even better that are now shipping in the case of hardware four and almost every Tesla sold. And uh, V12 is now an alpha. Some people on the team, including Elon, are testing it out. This is just the beginning. We're gonna actually laugh at how primitive this software is compared to what we have in the future. I mean, really, this is trending towards being better than humans in every way. Today, we might turn it off if we're late because it kind of wastes time with things sometimes. In the future, I think it's actually gonna be able to drive faster than us, spot things before us, um, exceed humans in pretty much every metric that matters. It's the same way AI has beat the best Go players in the world and the best StarCraft players in the world and the best Dota players in the world. All right, moving along now. And it's getting really smooth, comfortable, and usable. It's crossing the chasm to be a really uh, important product for consumers. And I think it's absolutely going to be material to the financials in the second half of the year and possibly provide a surprise. They've got a base of over uh, a million cars that can run this software. And less than half of them have the FSD package already. So it's a massive opportunity to sell this to people. And I don't think people realize how addictive it is to have the capability to not drive your car, um, that I can just ask the car to drive whenever I want. I have the ability to drive whenever I feel like it, whether it just, you know, I wanna have fun or whether I'm feeling the car's doing something unsafe, I can drive whenever I want but I also have the ability to ask it to drive. And I think this is an incredible thing and it's actually the model that consumers are gonna prefer. I think consumers are gonna like being in control better than sort of sitting in the back seat and hoping they don't crash. So, I mean, you look at Tesla's place in the market, they've got the most affordable car uh, you can get these days. When you look at the average selling prices of vehicles, GM is actually higher than Tesla. That's kind of crazy, that a pure EV company has a lower average selling price than General Motors. And, you know, it's a turning point. EV price parity. It's really happening. And now Tesla's got another vehicle they're going to cut half the cost out of. And... The base model of that won't have any manual controls at all. It's a crazy world we're moving into fast and, um, you know, when are people going to wake up? It's almost like after <laughs> driverless services are ubiquitous, people are still going to be saying it's impossible. That's what I feel like. Because here I am, I'm using this thing. It's literally driving me around, doing all my drivings. I had to go see some houses and it was just driving me to all the houses yesterday just perfectly you know I think there was one time where it braked 
uh, going through an intersection and the light turned red and it sort of hit the brakes a little bit, which was wrong. But other than that, there were like no mistakes. And, you know, it used to be pretty common that it would slow down unexpectedly, that type of thing. It's just doing the drive exactly the way it's supposed to. And this is just the beginning. We're going to look back on this as very primitive. So I can only imagine what V12 is capable of. Elon has said it's mind-blowing, um, whatever that means. And, you know, some people have been making fun of him saying, oh, well, you said V11's mind-blowing. Well, V11 was mind-blowing. Um, <laughs> you know, like the software has continued to improve and I think it's going to continue to improve. This is just the beginning. Um, so, yeah, I think Tesla is being undervalued as an AI stock. And they've started putting the Optimus robots in the <laughs> in the stores now. I think, you know, the Optimus robot is potentially an even bigger application of the software stack than the cars. Because re you really look at what the software is doing here, and it's essentially able to just um, take in cameras and create a model of the world, as you can see here. And the robot will be able to do the same thing, take in images with the camera, build a model of the world, figure out how to walk through it, um, occupy, uh, you know, uh, what do you, uh, use objects, that sort of thing. Okay, it's checking if it's clear to make a left. Very good. And now we're getting close to our destination. Okay, slowed for a speed bump there. That was good. In the past, it's had issues with just sort of going through them too fast or recognizing them too late. All right, full NHTSA approved stop. Yeah, I, you know, I think the market is just obsessed with Tesla's auto business. They're kind of looking in the rear view mirror. Nobody really talks about the growing energy business, the increasing amount of mega packs they're selling, power walls, and the AI side of the business, I think is really going to be bigger than auto really. And nobody's really looking at this. So I definitely think the AI side of the business is underappreciated and undervalued. Um, the Tesla team is putting this out into the real world. People do not appreciate how hard that is to ship a product for real consumer cars that hundreds of thousands of people are going to use and to be able to do it uh, safely, carefully, and um, the active safety features that they're shipping powered by this technology. It's preventing crashes every day, a lot of them, and nobody gives them credit for that. I, I think, um, you know, people are really, really undervaluing what they're doing here. This is an absolutely transformative technology. I mean, just look at, um, at what it did here. Um, I just asked it to take me somewhere. Okay, it's a little, little far from the line here. So it didn't do a good job of picking where the line was for that stop sign, but you know, it was not too big of a deal. It still had visibility. Okay, slowing down for a speed bump again. Could have slowed down a little more, maybe like 15 or 17. Slow down to like 19. All right, now we got a left turn here. There is a median in the middle. Looks like it's picked that up on the visualization. And here we go, we're turning left. And here we are at the 16th Avenue tiled steps. There are the steps right there in front of us. And it's going to pull forward. Oh, that's interesting. It made a U-turn. <laughs> well, that was unexpected, uh, but, you know, uh, <laughs> it's good that he can do that now. He used to not be able to do that. So what we just saw is I told my car, take me here to the 16th Avenue tiled steps, 
and my car just drove me there in the night using just cameras on a stock Tesla. This is a 2021 Tesla. Wake up, people. <laughs> a, a Tesla today, an ordinary Tesla you can buy today, any Tesla, can already do this. And this is just the beginning. This is very primitive software compared to what we're going to have in a few months, let alone a few years. They've got new hardware they're shipping. Um, you know, honestly, I'm trying to buy more Tesla stock uh, because I, I think this is really being underappreciated. So right now you can get three free months of full self-driving. If you use my link, I'll put it on the screen. So go order, go order a new Tesla with uh, full self-driving and try it out for yourself. Um, or subscribe on your existing Tesla. If you have a Tesla with full self-driving, they're also doing a promotion. You can transfer Tesla uh, full self-driving capability to your new car at no cost. So you buy a car at the new low prices. You don't have to pay extra for the FSD. This is an amazing deal. So definitely go jump on that. And uh, finally, thanks to our sponsor, Abacus AI. They're an end-to-end -end ML uh, ops and AI platform. Go check them out at abacus.ai. And uh, bravo, Tesla team. What we just saw is completely normal for me. This thing literally does all my driving now. Anywhere I want to go, it takes me there. But I think people just really do not appreciate the miracle that this team has pulled. So can we all appreciate the Tesla team more for putting out this work that is literally saving people's lives, preventing people from crashing and getting hit every single day? Can we give them some appreciation for it? Because there's all these dumbasses and Tesla competitors saying, oh, they're the worst, they're killing people. When the reality is, they're creating a technology that can add the ability to understand what's happening around the car to any car at low cost. And this is incredible. No one else can do it. And um, it's here. It's real. This isn't the future. This is today. So go Tesla team. Uh, I can't wait to see what's coming in future updates.